Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that as the, the, the flowers fade and the grass withers, the word of the Lord endures forever. I thank you that this word is everything to us. I thank you that your word, this, when Jesus said, I have food that you know nothing about, man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the Father's mouth. Lord, we thank you for every word that proceeds from your mouth, that this book was penned by men on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your heart to us, your children, that we can live a life of faith in you, that we be prepared for every season that we walk through, that you would encourage us and strengthen us and empower us for every moment of our lives. We say thank you for it. There's nothing more precious than the word of God. And Lord, I pray today that you would just speak to us through it, illuminate things that you want us to learn. And I pray, Lord, that you, that you will do what only you can do, that you would get all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, say amen today. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I want to ask you a question before we start. And we're going to point out, I want to point out six qualities about Joseph today that you and I can glean from as he walked through this plan. But, but I want to just start with this. Do you think it was easy? You know, do you think it was easy? I, I wonder, I, I hope that maybe we've crossed this place in our faith where we realize that giving our heart to Christ does not mean that everything's just going to be easy. Uh, there's actually a promise for us. We're going to go through trials. You're going to, when you face trials of many kinds, when you, you, you are going to face persecution, you're going to have difficult seasons. You're going to be around difficult people. People are going to hurt you. You're going to have dip. There's just going to be, there's going to be tough seasons. And even when you're pursuing God and following the plan, his plan for your life, you're going to, there's going to be difficult moments along the way. Come on. Are, are we all on the same page there? It's important for us to know that because otherwise we'll start to interpret difficult seasons as I'm, maybe I'm out of the will of God. Or man, if this is difficult, it can't be the Lord. And I, I need to stay away from any kind of difficulty, anything that's tough. I just can't read any place in scripture that Apostle Paul went through more than you and I will probably ever go through in our life. One of the greatest Christian to ever walk the earth and, and God used him in powerful ways to plant churches and, and missionary work all around the world. And yet this, this guy went days without food. He said there was times he had no clothes. He was shipwrecked. He was in prison time and time again. Here's one thing we know. It's not always going to be easy. But here's the thing. It will always be worth it. It won't always be easy, but it will be worth it. Uh, another, another question. May, maybe we'd say, do you know, do you think, do you think this story played out the way that Joseph may have pictured it? You know, when, when God gave Joseph this dream, I doubt Joseph was going, oh man, it's going to be amazing. And my family's gonna betray me. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in prison for doing the right thing. This is gonna be great. God's gonna come through. Oh, I'm gonna do a favor for somebody, and then they're gonna forget about me. Oh man, it's gonna be it. never. It's not happening. This this was not the way that he pictured it. Oftentimes, we don't picture the way that things are going to happen. But here's what I want to do today. We're going to talk about, I want to talk about six character qualities of Joseph that you and I can learn from as we walk through this story. But, but here, here's one thing I do want to point out before we do this. Uh, we've kind of, we've kind of front loaded our time in scripture throughout the week. Okay. So I'm not going to be diving into a lot of scripture as we go. I want to point some things out and I want to be careful to note this. Um, while we're going to be looking at a man today, what we want to be learning from is the faith inside of that man, not the man himself. Come on, say amen. I want to, and, and here's one thing we have to be really careful as Christians not to get into a place of behavior modification. Are you with me today? We don't want to, I just need to be better. I just need to be smarter. I just need to stop doing nothing. Listen, you need Jesus. So before we can start looking at Joseph, we need to get this clear. You need to be, I, we, we need, we want to be like Jesus. We want to follow Jesus. My faith is in Jesus. Our life is in his hands. He paid the price for us. But today we're going to learn, we're, and, and what we're going to see, we're going to see godly characters through a man. 
But I, I, I wanted to just uh, pre- preempt our time with that because it is, I, I always want to be really, really careful that we don't get into a place of, I just need to be stronger, better, faster, quicker. You know, I just need to do this less, do this more. Listen, we need the Lord to do in us what only he can do. Every day of your life, you need to live in submission to him. And any day that you don't live with him, you'll know it. Come on, say amen. Any day that you try to do it apart from him, the Lord will quickly remind you that you need him. Why? Because God loves you far too much to call you into a life that you could do without him. I would never, ever, I would never, ever, and we can't even, this aren't even the same playing field. I would never look at my kids and go, oh man, I just hope they can do the rest of this life without me. Oh man, I hope right now at five, seven, and nine, they can just move out on their own and never talk to me again. Man, that'd break, that'd be, that's, this is worst case scenario. I want to walk with them. I want to do life with them. I want to speak with them. I, they need to need me in this season. They need to glean from their father. They need this relationship, but they're also going to need to get built up that one day they can spread their wings and fly. And I'm not saying, listen, the Lord wants us to build up and he wants us to be strengthened in our inner man or your inner woman. He wants your character to grow. He wants our faith to grow, but never to a place that we leave him behind. We always want to hold on to the Lord. So here's what I want to do. We're going to talk about six of Joseph's character qualities today that I just believe uh, really empowered him uh, along the way that I want to share with you today. And the first thing is this, is that Joseph believed the dream that God gave him. Joseph believed the dream that God gave him. Let me ask you this. Do you believe what God says? Do you believe what God says? Because what started this whole process was Joseph believed something that even his own family said, not a fan. Joseph believed something that got him excommunicated from his family. Joseph believed something that that for a certain time separated him from his family. And yet, Joseph believed it. The Bible says about Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Let me ask you this. Do you believe God? Do you believe the words of the Bible? Do you believe the things that God shares with us? Do, do you, and, and, and here, here's, here's, I'm, I'm gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna step down to the second step. Do you believe the words enough, not just to say, yes, I do, but do you believe them to say, yes, I will? Do do you believe the words of God enough to take it from reading it, knowing it, believing it, to putting it into practice? Let me ask you one more thing. Do you believe the the, the word of God? Now we're going to go down to the next step. Do you believe the word of God enough to say, yes, I will, even when others say that I shouldn't? Do you believe the word of God to stand firm for it? Listen, because the world around us right now, I don't know if anybody else is recognizing this. The world around us is attacking this at every opportunity. I just saw a commercial from uh, 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 Planned Parenthood. I'm gonna share this with you today. You need to know this. I just saw a commercial from Planned Parenthood that is promoting that virginity is a myth. Wow, really? Really? And this is one of many things that is being pumped, pumped, pumped into our world, pumped into our kids. Listen, We've got it. You got to stand on the word of God. You got to be reading the word of God. You got to be sharing the word of God in your home. You got to fight against this stuff. So what we need to realize is that you and I, we, 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 we do live in a time and we will continue to live in a, in a time where there will be people close to you, people around you, people in your community, people in your job, people in your family that will say, you're nuts, you're wrong, that's not right. And listen, the, the, what, what, what started this process with Joseph, Joseph believed God. He believed the dream that God gave him. And even when it pushed him away from his family, Joseph believed God. Listen, this is where it starts for us. Do do you believe God? Do you believe the word of God? 
Will, will you hold on to the word of God that is not just like pages written on a book? This is not some ancient book that's outdated. This is not just something that your grandmother thought was, was right. And now you're going to listen. This is, it's, it's alive and active. The word of God, it endures forever. And, and listen, if you're going to anchor your life on anything anchored on this, people are going to hurt you. Seasons are going to change. You're going to go through difficult stuff. This will never change. The word of God will never change. So what started off is Joseph believed God. We can all look all throughout scripture. We talked about Abraham, Noah. Noah believed God. You know, it took Noah 100 years to build that ark. He was 200 miles from any water and everybody thought he was crazy until the water came. And through those hundred years, can you imagine how many times people told him, oh, there's crazy Noah. You know how much heckling Noah must have gotten? The Bible says that all the people were evil all the time. There were evil people around a righteous man walking by every day going, how's, the, how's, that, how's that art coming, Noah? Oh, we heard about this water that's supposed to sprout up. How are you going to get the ark from here to there? And I was like, oh, we're not going to get the ark from here to here to there. The water's going to come here and this is going to be the only thing that saved us. So why do I believe that? Because God told me face to face. So I don't need you to affirm what God has told me. God told me face to face. Come on. Can we raise up our faith in a way to say, listen, when God tells me something, I believe it. If the Bible says it, I believe it. This is where we want to be Joseph believe God. Now this is amazing. Point number two is amazing because what we already know is that Joseph following the Lord, it now put him in unfair circumstance number one is that he believed this dream that God gave him. And when he shared it, he got sold as a slave, put into Potiphar's house. And got, the, the Bible says that God was with him. So his hand, everything he was touching was flourishing. But then there was this moment where Potiphar's wife came and she wanted to seduce him. And he being an, an integral man of God was going to have none of that. And, and then it would send him into prison. But, but here's what I want to say. N number, number two, number one, he believed the dream that God gave him. But number two, he maintained a life of integrity. Oh, come on. Your amen can sound better than that. He, he maintained a life of integrity. Why is this so important? Because Joseph's integrity, I need you to hear this now. I need you to hear this. Joseph's, Joseph's integrity was not his repayment to God for what he felt like was a fair circumstance. Take that in. Joseph's integrity was not, okay, God, I'm going to pay you back with my integrity because everything that you're doing for me is perfect. I can see everything that you're doing. This feels fair. You know, Joseph was in an unfair circumstance. He got sold as a slave. He got separated from his family. And even there, he lived a life of integrity. Come on. Our integrity is not just a repayment for everything being great. Listen, we're to be, we're, we're to do the right thing all the time when nobody's looking. Man, what does it mean to have integrity? It means you always do what's right all the time. Okay, pastor, but under what circumstances are we talking about? So how, where does integrity come into play? Because we live in this place, even in our relationships, we're like, I give back to you what you give to me. So we go, oh, well, is, is integrity, well, yeah, no, no, no. I'm in, I, you know, if my friend who I can trust, if, if he drops his wallet, then I'd give it back to him. But if that brother who I know would dig through there, pull out a couple 20s first and then give it back, when he drops his wallet, I'm now on a different scale because I'm, I'm paying back for what's been done is, is this the way that it's supposed to work? Integrity is we always do what's right all the time. 
Integrity is not based on our current circumstances. It's not based on whether we think, whether we feel like things are fair. We don't have an integrity meter that, that rises and falls depending. Listen, our, your integrity is not a thermometer for your current circumstances. It can't like rise up when things are really well, but then drop really low if you things like, feel like things aren't fair. And here's what I love. Joseph in an unfair circumstance, sold as a slave, living in Potiphar's house, abandoned from his family. He and, and, and now he's even in a situation. Listen, if there was anybody at any time who wanted to reason with their flesh while what he was doing was okay, it would have been Joseph uh, uh, sleeping with the wife of the man who, who he was enslaved to unfairly. And yet in that moment, Joseph said, no chance, not happening it's not right. I would never repay my master this way. Joseph's a man of God. He's got integrity in his heart. Never going to do this. Not once, not twice, not three. Every time she approached him, he, he turned her down, even to when it meant running out of the house with his robe stripped off, maybe making himself look like a fool. And ultimately, when he did the right thing, now, how many of you guys know this is tough? He did the right thing and still got in trouble. Man, like this is not the fun part. When you do the right thing and you're still in trouble. But listen what the Bible says about integrity in Proverbs 11, 3. It says, the integrity of the upright guides him, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. What does that mean, duplicity? When you're a different person depending on where you're around. You're one person in public, but you're another person behind closed doors. You're one person on Facebook, but you're another person in your family. You're one person, you know, in front of your Christian brothers and sisters, but you're a different person behind closed doors. You're one person when people are looking, but you're another pe person when people aren't. Listen, that's living in duplicity and it'll always lead to a place of destruction. What we want to be, what we have to be, we want to be men and women of integrity. You always do what's right all the time. If you're going to call yourself a disciple of Christ, it means that we live our lives to the best of our ability to the word of this Bible and God's plan for our life. And we always do what's right all the time. Come on, say amen today. But here's what's awesome. Here's the example that Joseph gave, gave him, gave us, is that sometimes you can do the right thing. Sometimes, a, a lot of times, most of the time, you, when you do the right thing, you're going to be rewarded for it. And whatever that reward is, maybe, and, and sometimes it's just like, hey, thank you so much for doing that right? Uh, you did the right thing. Hey, thank you so much. You returned someone's wallet. You, what, whatever it is, what, whatever that right thing is, you did what was right. And a lot of times you're going to be rewarded, for, but there will be times when you can do the right thing and you can still be treated unfairly. But listen, here's what we're going to learn through Joseph. The, the key is to serve the Lord through it all regardless. Come on, say amen today. Come on, you guys need to lean in a little bit more today. Say amen today. You got to do, there are going to be times when you do the right thing, but you're still treated unfairly, but you've got to continue to serve the Lord throughout it all. Joseph gives us this incredible um, uh, witness that even through all of the difficult things that he was going through, now he was sold as a slave. He goes into Potiphar's house. He's doing everything right. Potiphar's house is flourishing. Potiphar's wife comes after him. He does what's right. Again, and now he's thrown into prison. Now, this was a this was a, a, really an opportunity to, for Joseph to go, you know what, Lord, forget this. I'm over this. Man, this serving the Lord thing is tough. This is not going... This is not going the way I thought I was going to go. You know what, Lord? I don't deserve this. Can I have a, just a quick moment with you? You and I could not look Jesus in the face and say, you deserve that. Jesus took what he did not deserve, what he did not create, and what he did not cause on the cross for you and I, so that we could be free. Amen. Come on, you can say amen to that today. He didn't waver. He didn't jump ship. He endured it all. Matter of fact, he considered it joy 
to go to the cross for you and I. Here, here's what's amazing through Joseph. Joseph, through all the unfairness, continued to be a man of integrity. He continued to serve the Lord for through it all. Why is this so important? Because listen, your circumstances are gonna change. Your savior never will. Come on. Your circumstances will get difficult, but you got the same savior throughout them all. Seasons of your life are gonna change. He never changes. People around you are gonna change. He's always the same. People around you are gonna lie. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so listen, our faith in him cannot be about circumstances, seasons, the way that things are. Listen, you got to serve the Lord throughout it all. And one of the beautiful things that we see in the life of Joseph is he maintained his faith in God. It says that while he was in prison, the Lord was continually with him, continued to bless him. And here, here, see, so now I feel like here, let's let the pendulum start swinging to the positive now right? Because we've talked about here's some unfair circumstances, but can I tell you what's amazing? That no circumstance defined what God was going to do through him in that circumstance. So the circumstance of Potiphar's house, you go, oh man, you're a slave, destined to doom. Lord's like, nope, my favor's on your life. I'm going to raise you up to the top. Wow. Oh, you're a man of integrity, doomed to prison. Oh, nope. The Lord says, my hand's on you. My favor's on you. I'm going to do this. Watch this. Watch this. Pastor Trent said, I've seen you move. I've seen you do it before. You're going to do it again. The guy's like, watch this. Just in case you thought that was coincidence or something of your own doing, watch how this happened. I'm going to do it again. And he's in prison and the Lord's hand and favors on him. What does he do? Raises him up again. What do we see? We see that God doesn't leave him. God doesn't leave you and I in difficult seasons. And the worst thing that you and I could do is to turn our back on the only one who can do anything for us just because our season is difficult. I love that Joseph was not a fair weather follower. You know that David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Time out. Why? Because I'm a great man of God. Oh, because I killed Goliath. No, because I'm going to write all the Psalms. I'm going to be famous one day. No, because I'm a king. No, I will fear no evil because you're with me. You, God. It's about you, God. It's not about me. Come on, say it. It's not about me. I know I'm crushing your dreams right now. You thought it was about you. I love you. It's not about you. Thank God for it. I'm so thankful it's not about me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, man, even in the most difficult moments when it's dark all around me, I, I'm gonna, I will fear no evil. Why? God is with you. God's with you. His promise, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God is with you. You need to know that God is with you. It might be a tough season, but God's with you. Stuff might be confusing, but God's with you. It might hurt, but God's with you. And if you hang on and you hang on and you hang on, you hang on, you're going to see his faithfulness in your life. You're going to see him come through. You're going to start to see the patterns of God's faithfulness in your life. It's going to start making sense. Come on, say amen today. The Lord was with Joseph in Potiphar's house. The Lord was with Joseph in prison. And Joseph just kept serving the Lord. When the dream came out, when this the chief cupbearer and the baker, they had this dream, Joseph, Joseph wasn't like, I don't know, go find somebody else. Mm -mm. Nope, I'm off the clock. I've been treated unfairly. I'm not doing anything for anybody. No one's done anything for me. Ooh, man. Sound familiar to anybody? your thoughts in this room? Nobody's done nothing for me. I'm not going to do anything for me. I know the answer, but I'm not sharing it. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Somebody better do something for me before I start sharing something that I know. Man. This thing better start swinging the other direction. You owe me. 
When is anybody going to do anything for me? Joseph, in all these difficult circumstances, he hears this and he goes, hey, who do you think is going to interpret that? That's the Lord and only the Lord. And I know him. Let me help you with that. Let me help you with that. He hasn't turned his back on me. I'm not going to turn my back on him. Come on, say amen today. God has not turned his back on me. I'm not going to turn my back on him. Joseph continues serving the Lord. I'm so thankful that he wasn't a fair weather follower, but he followed the Lord wholeheartedly, even in the most difficult circumstances, and it paid off for him. Hey, imagine this. Imagine if he would have had that attitude. Do you know that it was his willingness to serve the Lord in that moment that, that eventually got him out of there? What if he never interpreted that dream? Let this sink in for a moment, please. What if Joseph's bad attitude kept him from interpreting that dream? No, not going to do it. Not going to do it. Do you know that it was because he interpreted the dream that he got on the map with Pharaoh? Is it because that happened? How important it is that you and I, we guard things. Even when you think you're in a moment that's not going to matter. You know, every moment matters. E every moment matters. And so what we know, we're going to speed up a little bit. We know that Joseph, uh, eventually the chief cupbearer, he comes with senses. He realizes, oh man, I forgot about my friend. Pharaoh has a dream and he needs someone to interpret this dream. And so here comes Joseph. Uh, they, they bring him back. Joseph interprets the dream. The dream basically is God is trying to prepare them for, they're going to have seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. This is important because in the years of plenty, they need to save for the years of famine. And this is going to, this is what's going to provide for Egypt and for the 12 tribes of Israel as they're moving forward. And so God positions Joseph in this place. And then, so as, as the story continues, this is where the vision that God get, has given him comes to pass because Joseph's brother's coming, needing some food. They come to Joseph. Joseph reveals himself to them and they're all full of fear. Can you imagine why his brothers might've been full of fear? Because his brothers were thinking, man, if he treats us like we treated him, we're in trouble. If Joseph decides to play eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, it's all of our heads in this moment. Praise God that Joseph didn't operate that way. Praise God that Joseph had enough wisdom to see it really wasn't even you who did this to me. But, my, but point number four is this is so so let me just recap he believed the dream that god gave him he believed god's word he maintained a life of integrity he continued to serve the lord through unfair circumstances and he forgave those who hurt him he forgave those who hurt him hey i'm a brother i got i got five brothers if my brothers did this to me it would hurt man it would hurt Joseph, uh, the, the reality was that even, even God doing this, even God sending him ahead, even God having all this plan, there was a moment that Joseph had to forgive his brothers. Joseph had to, and matter of fact, listen, you, you know the way that Joseph forgave? It wasn't in that, um, it wasn't in that way. I don't know if, if you guys ever watch anybody when they when they ask for forgiveness. You you ask for forgiveness because you know it's what you have to do, but it's not because you want to do. When you ask for when you when you forgive someone because you believe it's what you have to do, you go like this: I forgive you. They're like they're like they're like I'm so sorry. You're like it's cool. I'm over it. No, you're not. You know that Joseph, the, the point of Joseph's forgiveness was not him doing what he was supposed to do. He actually wanted to forgive them. He wanted to forgive them of the guilt 
He wanted to forgive them of the decision. He wanted to forgive them of the shame. He wanted to forgive them of all us. Listen, this is so amazing. We think forgiveness is about us. It's not about us. Joseph literally wanted them to experience forgiveness. Isn't that amazing? Joseph's like, listen, no, 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 no. Don't carry that weight. Don't carry it. I can see you got fear inside of you. I can see you're carrying this guilt and this shame. Can you imagine what those brothers felt over all those years? Do you think their conscience at any time wasn't like, dang, we should not have done that? Do you think there was never a family reunion when, when they watched Jacob mourned the loss of his son and all of them knowing they had done something wrong and they had lied and cheated. Do you think there wasn't anything inside of their hearts that was mourning? And when Joseph forgave them, he didn't forgive them so that he did what was right. He gave them because he wanted them to receive forgiveness. Joseph didn't need to forgive them. He was already in a place of power. But let me take that a step further because you know that you and I are called. Jesus tells us, unless you forgive, you cannot be forgiven. And we can't live this place. I don't know about you, but I need the Lord's forgiveness on a regular basis. So I can't live in this place where I come to you and ask for forgiveness. But man, I hold on to the uh, unforgiveness. It's in my heart to people around me who have hurt me. And I, and I love that Joseph's heart was that he forgave his brothers. Here, here's just a couple of quick points. You know that Joseph could not have fulfilled his God-given purpose if he didn't. If Joseph didn't forget his brothers, when they, when they came that day, he would have had them all put to death. Do you know that he had the power to do that? Can I tell you something? Just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean that you should. Just because, you, just because we have a just, we're, we're justified to do something doesn't mean that we should. Joseph had the right. Man, he had it all written down. He could have given anybody, Joseph, why are you putting your brothers to death? Oh, <laughs> well, let me tell you. They did this. And this. But see, he would be looking at it through the wrong lenses. He'd be looking at it through the lenses of the flesh. But when he saw it through the lenses of the spirit, what Joseph was able to see, it wasn't you. God sent me ahead of you to save you. Now, if God sent me ahead of you to save you, how can I not forgive you? How, how can I allow you to stay in a place of guilt and shame? How could I, how, what do you want me, what am I supposed to do right now? Am I supposed to rub your nose into something that I, I, I shouldn't even be giving you credit for? God, they, Joseph said to his brothers, you're not even the one that sent me. I know that you think you're the one, but listen, it was God who sent me here ahead of you. And through those lenses, he was able to wholeheartedly forgive and love his brothers. Isn't that amazing? I have a question that I want to ask you today before we move on. And it's this, what are you waiting for? If you're holding on to unforgiveness in your heart, what is it that you're waiting for? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for someone else to move first? Are you waiting for someone else to correct something? Are you waiting for thing, the tables to turn? Are you waiting for just the right moment? What, what do you, I, I just, I, I wanna ask you this question. What are you waiting for? Joseph, in this moment, the very first opportunity, he handled, you know, he handled this first. He didn't take any time to go, oh man, I'm gonna make him sweat it out. And I know none of us have ever done that, you know? Yeah. This is also known as the silent treatment. I'm gonna make them sweat it out for a little while. I'm gonna make them wonder what's going on. I'm gonna make them wonder. Ooh, I'm gonna make them. No, the, he, Joseph handled first things first. Let me just tell you, hey, it wasn't you. Hey, I forgive you. Hey, it's all good. Hey, listen, God sent me ahead not to condemn you, to save. Come on, say amen today. This is good. You know what I hope? I'm not going to tell you what you need to do. I'm going to say this. I pray that I can respond in the same ways when people do things to me that hurt me. Man, I pray that because I don't know about you. I have a flesh too. And sometimes my flesh likes to go, you should do this. You should say this. 
You should text this. You should respond this way. You should put this on their Facebook post. I, oh, I know I'm the only one in the room today. I'm not, your guys are like, man, pastor, get out of here. You do too. But I pray, I pray that we can silence that negative, flesh-filled, prideful voice and say, Lord, what would you have me do right here? I pray we can do that. Come on, say amen today. I love that Joseph, he forgave those who hurt him. Five, this kind of ties in. This is amazing. Uh, he recognized and acknowledged God's sovereignty throughout it all. This is so important for our life. It's important as we look at our life, as we look at God's plan for our life, that we see God's hand throughout it all. We see the sovereignty of God. Um, our ability to recognize God's hand in our life and our circumstances will directly uh, determine the way that we experience them, both the good and the bad. When we can recognize what God is doing, when we can see God's hand in the midst of, of circumstances that sometimes feel like it's somebody or something or someone doing something to us, that we can recognize and acknowledge God's sovereign hand on our life, this is huge. And this, listen, this helped Joseph fulfill his purpose. This, this is where the forgiveness came from. This is where the, the executing of God's plan came from. He recognized it wasn't you, it was God. And I think we got to do a better job at, uh, on, at, at all times of just recognizing, Lord, when is this really something unfair? Or when are you giving me an opportunity to grow? When is this like your hand's really not on me? And when is this like you love me enough to teach me uh, to teach me to trust you? This is important. This is important as we follow the Lord. We got to recognize moments God, when God is doing something that we don't necessarily run from the things that are tough, but we'll embrace them. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Why? Because the testing of your faith develops perseverance and perseverance must finish its work so you can be what whole and complete not lacking anything. So Joseph recognized and acknowledged. Let me have the worship team come up here, please. I'd like to have the whole team come because we're going to sing. Uh, I want to sing the chorus for Do It Again. Let me have you guys come, please. He recognized and acknowledged God's sovereignty through it all. And then number six, this, this kind of ties it all together. <laughs> is that he fulfilled his God-given purpose. Come on, say amen today. He fulfilled his God-given purpose because he believed God, because he maintained a life of integrity, because he served the Lord even in unfair circumstances, because he forgave those who hurt him, because he saw God's sovereignty in his hand on his life, he fulfilled God's purpose purpose. If Joseph doesn't believe the dream that God gives him, he doesn't fulfill his God-given purpose. If Joseph throws his integrity to the wind, he doesn't fulfill God's given purpose. If Joseph gives up on the Lord, he doesn't fulfill his God-given purpose. If Joseph doesn't forgive his brothers, he doesn't fulfill his God-given purpose. And if he doesn't acknowledge God's sovereignty throughout it all, he doesn't fulfill his God-given purpose. Come on, say amen. Thank you. This is why, you know, when you hear, when you hear me say, you hear anybody say, man, you got to be in the word of God. Why is that? It's, it's because the word of God will minister to our hearts in every season, in every way. We could sit here all day long and talk about the Bible and we wouldn't even scratch the surface. We wouldn't even scratch the surface. As a matter of fact, you can read this for the rest of your life and you will never scratch the surface. Man, it's that great. There's that much depth to it. There's that much weight. There's that much instruction. The Bible says about itself. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Man, this is why the word of God is so important. I want to encourage you today. 
You've got to be reading the Word of God. Please don't let Sunday mornings be the only time that you get into the Bible. Please don't let Wednesday night Bible study, which I encourage you, you got to be here for that. Be here. Any opportunity that you have to dive into the word of God, take it. Any time that you can be around great men of God who, who want to teach from the Bible, get around them. But can I tell you, you got to read it to yourself. Amen. Amen. It's got to be a part of your daily life. Why? It's going to encourage you. It's going to challenge you. It's going to mold you. It's going to shape you. It's going to, the word of God will be an anchor to your soul in difficult moments. We learn so much from the word of God. This was one story. This was one, one story in 66 books of this Bible that will encourage our hearts through so many things that we walk through.